Hey there, Twisters, and welcome, hockey fans. Today, we're talking about the Mount Rushmore for every NHL team. So often, it'll come up in conversations for your favorite team. Who are the greatest four players of all time, or the most iconic, or the most beloved? That's really something that's open to interpretation, but I've done this for every NHL team, taking cues from your suggestions in the community tab, so I'll be sure to spotlight some of those. We actually had somebody do this for every single team. That was XLR, so XLR, be sure to reach out to me because I've got a Twisted Wrister t-shirt for you. Now with this video, I make a lot of references to various awards that these players won, so if you don't know which each award means, just see on screen here for a bit of a key. I also have timestamps down below in case you want to skip around to your favorite team or a certain division. I hope you enjoy this video, guys. I put in a ton of effort, and if you do really like this and want me to continue producing work like this, please consider supporting my work, whether that's sharing this video on social media, buying some Twisted Wrister hockey merch, or perhaps becoming a member for even more content, or leaving a super thanks. And also drop a comment down below. What is your favorite team's most iconic moment of all time? Because I'm considering producing a video on that, so I'd certainly love your suggestions there. All right, let's get into it. All right, so we're gonna get started with teams in the Central Division, so first up, is the Arizona Coyotes franchise, and that actually includes the old Winnipeg Jets. So the first guy on my Mount Rushmore for Arizona is Shane Doan, of course, Captain Coyote, 13 years as the captain, and he played his entire 21-year career with the franchise, including in Winnipeg. He leads the franchise all time with 1,466 games, 402 goals, 570 assists, and points with 972, and he also won a King Clancy Trophy and a Marc Messier Award for Leadership. My second player is the late Dale Havrachuk, rest in peace. He played in half the games as Shane Doan, but he still had 379 goals and 550 assists in Winnipeg. He also won the Calder for Rookie of the Year and finished as high as second for the Hart Trophy, which is awarded to the MVP. He had seven seasons of at least 40 goals in Winnipeg. Our third player is Keith Kachuk. He had four seasons of at least 40 goals, including two with over 50. He ranks second in the Arizona era with 179 goals in 332 games, and he finished as high as 10th for the Hart Trophy. And the last guy on my Coyotes Mount Rushmore is Mike Smith. Now, I thought about Ilya Brzgalov, but Mike Smith was there longer and overall was pretty darn great for the Arizona Coyotes. In 312 games, he had a 916 save percentage and a 2.69 goals against average with 22 shutouts, and in the 2012 playoffs he was awesome 13 goals saved above average as the coyotes advanced as far as they have in the playoffs as a franchise as for my biggest snub i have oliver ekman larson he's actually second in scoring all time in the arizona and phoenix era and he's second in games played now let's get to the colorado avalanche franchise so that also dates back to their time in quebec as the nordiques we have some great suggestions from a few of our viewers here and i did borrow from this quite a bit in making my decisions so first of all it's joe sakic right 17 years as the captain and combined with his time in Quebec, he leads the franchise in games, goals, assists, and points. He won a Hart Trophy for MVP, a Pearson, which is the MVP as decided by his peers, and the 1996 Conn Smythe, the MVP of the playoffs, to go with his two Stanley Cups. And Sakic really does earn a spot at the front of this list for what he's done as well in the front office with helping turn the Avalanche into a three-time Stanley Cup champion. The second player on my list here is Patrick Wall, one of the greatest goaltenders of all time. He spent eight years in Colorado. He was a finalist for the Vezina Trophy for the best goaltender two times. He also won a Jennings, which is awarded to the goaltending tandem that surrenders the fewest amount of goals over the course of the season. He won the Conn Smythe in 2001 with a 934 save percentage, 1.70 goals against average, and four shutouts as the Avalanche won their second Stanley Cup. Our third player is Nathan McKinnon. He's already played over 700 games. He's only 28 years old. He's an alternate captain, but really the face of the franchise over the past decade. He won the 2014 Calder and has been a Hart finalist three times, and he led the 2022 playoffs with 13 goals in just 20 games. And last on my Mount Rushmore for the Avs, we have to take it back to Quebec, and it's Peter Stastny. Now, he was a very influential figure for European hockey players who would come over to the NHL. He played with his two brothers and flourished in Quebec. He's the all-time leader in points among Nordiques with 1,048. And don't forget, he also kind of left a legacy with this franchise because Paul Stastny played for Colorado as well. My biggest snub, it would have to be Hart Trophy winner Peter Forsberg, but other players certainly deserve strong consideration here. Miko Rantanen, Kale McCarr, 
there are probably like 10 other players we could consider here. Our next franchise is the Dallas Stars franchise. So this does include their time in Minnesota as the North Stars. So first on my list is Mike Madano. He's the all-time leader in franchise history with 1,459 games, 557 goals, 802 assists, and 1,359 points. He was a captain for two seasons and he was a point per game player in their back-to-back -back appearances in the Stanley Cup final in 99 and 2000. Second on my list is Sergei Zubov. Now he's the franchise's all-time leader among defensemen in games, goals, assists, and points. He was a Norris Trophy finalist once, and he was in the top 10 for Norris Trophy voting just about every year. He was also a strong playoff performer with 15 goals and 57 assists over 114 games. My third player is Jamie Benn. He's been the captain since 2013-14. He's won an Art Ross Trophy for the most points in an NHL season, and he was a Hart Trophy finalist the following year. And at the time of production, he's actually second in the Dallas Stars era in goals, assists, and points. And fourth on my list, I went a little bit off the board here, and I selected Yere Lettinen. So he played his entire 14 year career with the Stars before Patrice Bergeron and Pavel Datsuk. The Selkie Trophy, just about annually, would be given out to Yere Lettinen. He won the award three times and was a finalist three other times, and he had 514 points in 875 games. As for the biggest snub here, you could choose anybody from Dino Cicerelli to Neil Broughton to Brendan Morrow, Ed Belfour, but I'm actually going to go with the captain from their Stanley Cup run back in 1999, the hard hitting Darian Hatcher. Our next team here is the Nashville Predators. So first of all, it's Pecorine, right? There's a statue of him right out in front of Bridgestone Arena. He was drafted 258th back in 2004, and now he's perhaps going into the Hockey Hall of Fame. He played all 683 games as a Predator over 15 years. He won a Vezina Trophy and was also a three-time finalist for the award and also won a King Clancy Trophy. Second player is Shea Weber, third all-time in games for the Preds, and at least for now, he's first all-time among Predators defenseman with 166 goals and he's second among defensemen with 443 points. He's a three-time Norris Trophy finalist. He also won a Marc Messier award and was a six-year captain for this organization. Our third player is Roman Yossi. He won a Norris Trophy and he was a finalist a separate time. He's first among Predators defensemen all-time in games, assists, and points, and he's been the captain since 2017. And lastly, I chose Yusei Saros. Now, this season has been tough for him so far, but he's been awesome since taking over for Pecorine. He finished in the top six for the Vezina Trophy three times and was a finalist once. My biggest snub would be Philip Forsberg. He's a three-time 30-goal scorer and has played his whole career in Nashville. Now we're on to the St. Louis Blues. Our first player is the Golden Brett, Brett Hull. He's the all-time franchise leader in goals by far with 527. He's also second in points with 936. Over the course of three seasons, he averaged 76 goals per year, leading the NHL every year and was a Hart Trophy finalist in each of those years, winning it once, including also winning a Pearson as voted on by the players. He was also captain for the Blues for four years. Our second player is Bernie Federko. He leads the franchise all-time in games, assists and points with 1,073. Seven times he scored at least 30 goals for St. Louis. Over the course of 91 playoff games, he had 35 goals and 66 helpers, and he was also captain for one season. Alex Petrangelo is my third player. He was the captain from 2016 to 2020, winning the 2019 Stanley Cup, the first in Blues history, and he also had three goals and 16 assists on that run. He finished in the top five for the Norris Trophy twice, and among Blues defensemen, he's second all-time in games, goals, and points, and he's first in assists. And my last player on this Mount Rushmore is Chris Pronger, one of the most intimidating defensemen of that era. He was a three-time Norris Trophy finalist, winning it once. He also won a Hart Trophy as the MVP of the NHL, and he was a five-year captain for the St. Louis Blues. And speaking of Blues defensemen, my biggest snub here is Al McInnes. He was a beast with the Calgary Flames. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And he actually won a Norris Trophy as well in St. Louis, and he was runner-up a separate time. All right, now on to the Chicago Blackhawks, one of the original six teams. So you know this one's going to be tough to narrow down to just four. So my first player is Stan Makita. He won the 1961 Cup with Chicago, the last time they would win it for 39 years. He won two Hart Trophies and four Art Ross Trophies. He was also a captain for two years, won two Lady Bing Trophies for sportsmanship, and all-time in Chicago Blackhawks history. He's first in games played, assists, and points, and he's second in goals to only Bobby Hull. Bobby Hull, 604 goals in 1,036 games. He also won two Hart Trophies and three Art Ross Trophies and a Lady Bing, 
winning that Stanley Cup with Stan Mikita. Seven times he led the NHL in goals, and in addition to winning the two Hart trophies, he actually finished as a finalist six other times. Third on my list is Patrick Kane, arguably the greatest American player of all time. He's third all time in games and goals, second in assists and points with 1,225. He won three Stanley Cups, and in one of those runs, he won a Conn Smythe as playoffs MVP. He also won an Art Ross Trophy, a Hart Trophy for MVP, and a Ted Lindsay Award. And the last player on my list is Jonathan Taves. I think that at times we forget how good prime Jonathan Taves was. And the dude captained the team to three Stanley Cups when he was very young, especially at first. He won a Conn Smythe in one of those cup runs. He was a three-time Selkie Trophy finalist. He won that award once. He won a Marc Messier Award for leadership. And he's fifth all-time for the Blackhawks in games played and sixth all-time in points. My biggest snub here is Tony Esposito. Rest in peace. He won the 1970 Calder and three Vezina trophies playing 15 seasons in the Windy City, and Glenn Hall was just as dominant. Now we get to the Minnesota Wild and a couple of great suggestions from our viewers here. I'm actually gonna go with what my Lauren suggested. So Mika Koivu, we'll start with him. He is Mr. Minnesota Wild. All but seven of his 1,035 career NHL games were with the Minnesota Wild, and during that time, for 12 years, he was captain of the team. He's the franchise's leader in games played. He's second in goals with 205, first in assists, and also first in points with 709. Kirill Kaprizov is my next player. Now, I know he hasn't played in the NHL all that long, but really, he's the first real superstar that this team had in its franchise history, and at just 26 years old, he has lots of great years of hockey left. He's already had two seasons of at least 40 goals. He won the Calder for Rookie of the Year, and he's finished as high as seventh for the MVP. Jared Spurgeon is my third player, longtime wild defenseman, over 800 games in his career, and he's also been captain for a few years. He's always been considered among the most underrated players in the NHL, and he's fourth all time in points with 379 as I make this video, but I'm sure he'll climb the ranks even further. And my last player is Marion Gabrick. I think that you could argue he was the first star on this team, but really Kaprizov did set the bar higher. Gabrick still leads the franchise all time with 219 goals, and on five occasions he scored at least 30 goals and was great for the Wild during their run to the 03 Conference Final. That's the furthest that they've gone in franchise history. As for my biggest snub, now Ryan Suter finished in the top five in Norris Trophy voting three times with Minnesota, but that Parisi and Suter era didn't really meet people's expectations, whereas Devin Dubnik was a Vezina finalist and fourth for the heart for the wild and played his best hockey there. Now let's get to the Winnipeg Jets. So for this, we can actually turn back the clock to their time in Atlanta as the Thrashers. So my first player is Connor Hellebuck. I think he's been the best player in franchise history so far. He's a three-time Vezina Trophy finalist. He won the award once. He's led the league in starts four times, and he's also led the league in wins and also shutouts. Over the course of his career, he has a 916 save percentage, a 2.66 goals against average, and and 33 shutouts, all of that coming with the Jets. My second player is Blake Wheeler. He captained the Jets for six seasons. He's first all time with 897 games. He's third in goals. He's first in assists, and he's first in points with 812. He's finished as high as eighth for the Hart Trophy as well. The third guy on my Mount Rushmore here is Ilya Kovalchuk, one of the great snipers of that era. He's first all time in this franchise's history in goals with 328, coming in just 594 games. He's also third in points with 615. He won a Rocket Richard and in six seasons had at least 40 goals and he actually was a two-year captain with the Thrashers. And the last guy on my list is the very hard-hitting Dustin Bufflin, one of the more intimidating players of that era. He ranks seventh all-time in games, 10th in goals, fourth in assists, and is tied for sixth in points, and he actually finished as high as seventh for the Norris Trophy. And the big snub here is Mark Shifley. He'll likely become the Jets' all-time leading scorer. Now let's get to the Metropolitan Division, and we start with the Columbus Blue Jackets. We've got this comment here from Machine Gun C, and actually, I gotta agree with you. This is a great list. So first of all, Rick Nash, the first overall pick in 2002, and for a long time, kind of like the Wild, the only real superstar that the Blue Jackets had. He was a five-year captain, he won a Rocket Richard and had seven seasons of at least 30 goals. He's second all-time in games played, but he's first in goals, assists, 
and points with 547 in 674 games. My second player is Sergei Bobrovsky. He won two Vezina trophies in Columbus and was a finalist for the Hart Trophy in 2017. Over seven years with Columbus, he had a 921 save percentage, a 2.41 goals against average, and 33 shutouts. My third player is Nick Foligno, who captained the team for six years and was just a physical, hard-nosed kind of player. He won a King Clancy Trophy and also a Marc Messier Award in the same year. He's also fourth in franchise games played, goals, and points, and he's also third in assists. And my last player is Cam Atkinson. He's third all-time in games, second in goals, fourth in assists, second in points with 402. He had six seasons of at least 20 goals, and in one of those years, he had a 41-goal season. My biggest snub here is Boone Jenner. He's the captain of the team right now and since 2021, and he's actually the franchise's leader in games played. Now to the Pittsburgh Penguins, and we had a couple of great suggestions here. You gotta get started with Mario Lemieux. To some, he's the greatest player who ever played the game, and he overcame some serious injuries and also cancer. He bought the Penguins all the way back in 1999 to help save the franchise, and he's still a partial owner and chairman of the organization. He captained the Penguins to back-to-back -back Stanley Cups and won the Conn Smythe both times, and playing in the Wayne Gretzky era, he won the Calder Trophy, three Hart Trophies, four Pearson Awards, six Art Ross Trophies, and a Masterton Trophy, and three times led the NHL in goals. Our second player is, of course, Sidney Crosby, Sid the Kid, just like Mario Lemieux. Imagine what he could have done without concussions setting him back. He was the youngest captain to win the Stanley Cup, guiding the Penguins to three more in their franchise and winning two Conn Smythes. He's second to Mario Lemieux in goals, assists, and points, but there's a good chance that he could pass him at least in one or two of those categories. And in over 1,200 games and over 19 seasons, he's won two Hart Trophies, two Art Ross trophies, three Ted Lindsay awards, which used to be the Pearson, two Rocket Richards, and a Marc Messier award. Our third player is Yaramir Yager. And man, when we talk about iconic players in hockey, not just on the Penguins, Yarmir Yager has to be toward the top of that list. He was a three-year captain with the Penguins over his 11 seasons there. He won four straight Art Ross trophies, five in total. He had 10 seasons with at least 30 goals in one of those years. He actually had 62, and he won two Pearson Awards, a Hart Trophy, and he was a finalist for that award four other times. And the last player on my Mount Rushmore, it was tough between Malkin and this guy, but again, we talk about iconic players, and Mark andre Fleur is certainly one of them. He was the Penguins' first overall pick in 2003, and even though he'd struggle at times in the playoffs, in 2009, we have to go back to what he did in Game 6 and then especially Game 7 with that last second save against the Detroit Red Wings in what was a great Stanley Cup Final. He won 375 games in Pittsburgh. That alone would actually put him top 20 all-time in the NHL, and of course, he would go on to have many other great seasons in Vegas and elsewhere. And I totally understand if you think that Malkin should be up on this Mount Rushmore instead of Flurry or instead of Yager. In his trophy case, he's got a Calder, two Art Ross trophies, a Pearson Award, and a Conn Smythe, among other honors. Now let's get to the Philadelphia Flyers, and I think that Jeffrey Dean here has absolutely nailed it. So let's start with Bobby Clark. He is Philadelphia Flyers hockey. He is the embodiment of that. He's the franchise leader in games, assists, and points. During his seven-year run as team captain, they won back-to-back -back Stanley Cups. They haven't won one since. He won three Hart Trophies, a Pearson Award, and a Selkie. And I know that he wasn't the most successful general manager, but he worked in the front office for the Flyers for 19 years. My second player is Claude Giroux. He's second all-time in games with 1,000 and points with 900. He was captain for 10 years. Three times he finished in the top five for Hart Trophy voting, and he was such a big piece as to why the Flyers went to that 2010 Stanley Cup final, had 10 goals and 11 assists in the playoffs. My next player, just kind of like Bobby Clark, Ron Hextall is Philadelphia Flyers hockey. Now in his rookie season, he led all goaltenders in games played, wins and save percentage, he won the Vezina Trophy as a rookie. That's incredible. That year, the Flyers lost to the Oilers in the Stanley Cup, but he actually won the Conn Smythe despite being on the losing side. In 489 games, he racked up 461 penalty minutes as a goaltender, and he was the second goalie in league history to score a goal, and the next year, he actually scored one in the playoffs. And the last player on my Flyers Mount Rushmore is Eric Lindros, aka the next one. He captained this team for six years, including in 1997 when they went to the Cup Final with those great Legion of Doom lines. He only played in 486 games, but had four seasons of at least 40 goals. He won a Hart Trophy and also a Pearson Award. My biggest snub here would be Bernie Perron. I can understand the argument as to why he belongs on this Mount Rushmore, as he did win two Vezina trophies. Now we're talking about the New Jersey Devils, 
First of all, it's Captain Crunch, Scott Stevens, 12 years as the captain, and during this time, they won three Stanley Cups. He won the Conn Smythe in 2000. He was a two-time Norris Trophy finalist, and he's second in points among Devils defensemen and first in plus-minus by over 100. The second player is Martin Brodeur. He played 1,259 games as a Devil. That's incredible as a goaltender. Still the most all-time among goaltenders in NHL history. He won four Vezina trophies and five Jennings trophies. He had 688 wins, 124 shutouts, which by itself is the most all-time and may never be broken. The third player on my list is Patrick Eliash. I think he's the biggest contributor to the Devils among forwards and kind of represents that crossover into the post-Scott Stevens era. He played all 1,240 games as a Devil and leads the franchise with 408 goals and 617 assists. And the last guy on my list, now I really thought about Scott Niedermeyer, just more on him in a second, but I chose Ken Danico. He won all three Stanley Cups with the Devils and played nearly 1,300 games with New Jersey, racking up over 2,500 penalty minutes. He also won the 2000 Masterton Trophy. And yes, my biggest snub is Scott Niedermeyer. He won all three Stanley Cups with them, but you could argue that maybe his best hockey came at the end of his time with New Jersey and then the start of his time in Anaheim. Now let's get to the New York Islanders. So really with this, I chose players who won all four Stanley Cups with them. So we have a center, a winger, a defenseman, and a goaltender. It'd be really fun to make a video like this following that format for each team. So first of all, it's Brian Trottier, the franchise leader in games, assists, and points. He's also second in goals. He was a four-time Hart Trophy finalist and a one-time winner. He won the Calder Trophy, an Art Ross, a Selkie, a King Clancy, and a Conn Smythe. Next player on my list is Mike Bossy. Rest in peace, he's maybe the greatest goal scorer in NHL history before Alex Ovechkin. In 752 games, he scored 573 goals. In five seasons, he had at least 60 goals. He won two Rocket Richards, he won a Calder, three Lady Bing trophies, and a Conn Smythe and was almost always in the Hart Trophy conversation. Denny Potvin was the captain for all four Stanley Cup runs, eight years overall in that role. He played all of his 1,060 games with the Islanders. Only Ray Bork and Nick Lidstrom have scored more points with one team among defensemen. And also he won the Calder. He was a six-time Norris Trophy finalist and three times he won the award. And my last player is Billy Smith, the goaltender. So all but five of his games were as an Islander. He won 304 games from 1972 to 89. He also won a Vezina Trophy, a Jennings, and also a Conn Smythe. My biggest snub here is really take your pick, but I'll say it's four-time 40-goal scorer Pat LaFontaine. Now we get to the New York Rangers, and Sackick fan, I love the suggestions here. I've chosen three of those players. Let's start with Henrik Lundqvist. He's ninth all-time in games played by a goaltender in NHL history and sixth in wins. He played his entire career with the Rangers because he couldn't play with the Capitals. In his career, he had a 918 save percentage and a 2.43 goals against average. Those numbers are excellent. He's a five-time Vezina Trophy finalist and won the award in 2012. Easily one of the best goaltenders who never won a Stanley Cup, maybe the best. And really, Henrik Lundqvist, he's a beauty. He's absolutely iconic and beloved by Rangers faithful. My next player is Marc Messier, who was the captain of this team in 1994 when they broke a 54-year Stanley Cup drought, and he served the role for 10 seasons overall. He won a Hart Trophy for MVP and also a Pearson Award in 1992. And despite just playing 698 games with the Rangers, he had 691 points, ranking him fifth among Rangers. My third player is defenseman Brian Leach. He was the captain for three years. He's second all-time in games played with 1,129, second all-time in points with 981, and that does include forwards. He won the Calder Trophy, he won that Conn Smythe in 1994, and he also won two Norris trophies. And my last player on the Rangers Mount Rushmore is Rod Gilbert. He's the all-time franchise leader in goals with 406 and with 1,021 points. He's also third in games played and won the 1976 Masterton Trophy. My biggest snub would have to be Andy Bathgate. He was a three-time Hart Trophy finalist and a one-time winner of that award. Now for the Washington Capitals. So the first player, of course, is Alex Ovechkin, the greatest goal scorer ever, and just a dominant player in multiple ways over his career. He has scored over 800 goals, second only to Gretzky as I make this video, and is about to eclipse 1,500 points. He won the Calder Trophy, nine Rocket Richards, an Art Ross Trophy, three Pearson Awards, and three Hart Trophies. And since 2009, he's been the captain of the team, and he won the 2018 Stanley Cup and won the Conn Smythe. 
Next up is the Secretary of Defense, and that is Rod Langway. He's regarded as one of the best shutdown defensemen ever. With Washington, he won two Norris trophies and was a finalist a separate time. He played in 726 games with the Capitals, committing just 504 penalty minutes in what was a physical, tough era. And also, you have to give him some kudos for mentoring Scott Stevens and helping him transform into the Hall of Fame defenseman that he was. My third player is Olaf Kolzig. Now, he didn't regularly appear with the Capitals until the mid-1990s, but technically he's spent 16 years with Washington. He won the 2000 Vezina Trophy and later a King Clancy, and of course, he helped backstop the Capitals to a Stanley Cup final appearance in 1998, and during that stretch, he had a 941 save percentage, a 1.95 goals against average, and four shutouts in just 21 games. And my fourth player is Nicholas Backstrom, because how could Ovechkin be the dominant player he was without the help of Nicholas Backstrom? Over 1,100 games, all with Washington, and over 1,000 points, he should be a Hockey Hall of Famer and had five goals and 18 assists in that Stanley Cup run. My biggest snub, I picked Peter Bondra. He was the heart of the Capitals offense during the 1990s. He led the league in goals twice, racking up nine 30 goal seasons, but certainly Mike Gartner, John Carlson, Braden Holtby. There are plenty other Capitals you could certainly consider for this Mount Rushmore. And the last team in the Metro is the Carolina Hurricanes, and this does date back to their time in Hartford as well. Great suggestions from our viewers. We're gonna start with Ron Francis. He really did bridge that gap between Hartford and Carolina eras. He was the captain for 12 years and guided the Hurricanes to their first Stanley Cup final appearance in 2002. Now that was something they couldn't actually achieve when they played in Hartford. Francis is first all time in games, goals, assists, and points with 1,175. He won a Lady Bing trophy and a King Clancy trophy. He finished top 10 in Hart Trophy voting on two occasions. And of course he also worked in hockey operations and was also general manager for the Hurricanes for several years. The second guy on my list is Rod the Bod, Brandon Moore. He's just sixth all time in games played in this franchise's history and fifth all time in points. But of course, he captained this team to their Stanley Cup in 2006, and he also won two Selkie trophies. And he's been an awesome coach for this club for the past several years, helping them be a competitive team year in, year out. My next player here is Eric Stahl, and his brother Jordan could certainly make a case. But Eric Stahl in 05 06, he had 45 goals and 55 assists, finishing fourth for the Hard Trophy. Trophy also had nine goals and 19 assists in that playoff run. He was at least a 30 goal scorer five times for Carolina. He's third all time in games played, second in goals, second in assists, and also second in points. And he was the team's captain from 2010 to 2016. And the last player on this Mount Rushmore is Cam Ward. Now, by no means was he a perennial all star goaltender, but he had a solid, long lasting career over 13 years with the Carolina Hurricanes. Four times he played at least 68 games. But of course, it's all about the 06 playoffs. He won the Conn Smythe as a rookie with a 920 save percentage, a 2.14 goals against average, and two shutouts. And my biggest snub, now Sebastian Ajo, I love him. He has several more great seasons ahead, hopefully with Carolina. He's locked up long term, but really I'm waiting for him to get to the Stanley Cup final before I can really elevate him to this list. Now let's get to teams in the Pacific Division. So we'll start with the Edmonton Oilers. So this comment here from NN010, Gretzky, Messier, McDavid, Dreisaitl. It's hard to argue against that. I do have one sort of substitution here. So we'll start with Wayne Gretzky, captain of the first four Stanley Cup teams and won two Conn Smythes. He won the MVP eight straight years. He also won five Pearson Awards, Five times he led the NHL in goals. He recorded 1,669 points with Edmonton, which by itself would be the ninth highest in NHL history. He played another decade after that. My second player is Marc Messier. He was the captain of the team after Gretzky, and he led the Oilers to their fifth Stanley Cup in 1990 while Gretzky was playing in LA. He also won the Conn Smythe during the Oilers' first cup in 1984, and he also won the Hart Trophy as MVP and the Pearson Award that year. My third player is actually a goaltender, and that is Grant Fuhr. He's an icon of this game, especially because of his wild mask designs. He was a four-time Vezina Trophy finalist and a one-time winner, and his 226 franchise wins are going to be very hard to match. And my fourth player is Connor McDavid. I know he doesn't have a cup, right? But already in his ninth year, at the age of 26, he has three Hart Trophies, four Ted Lindsay Awards, five Art Ross trophies, and a Rocket Richard. Now my biggest snub, you could certainly say it's Leon Dreisaitl. Hey, don't forget about Paul Coffey. He didn't play 
all that many years in Edmonton, but he was certainly among the most elite defensemen of that decade. Now let's get to the Calgary Flames. My first player is Jerome Aginla. He captained the team for nine years, got them to game seven of a Stanley Cup final. He's the franchise leader in games played, goals, and points. He had 11 seasons of at least 30 goals, and he won an Art Ross and a Pearson, two Rocket Richards, a King Clancy Trophy, and a Messier Award. My second player is Lanny McDonald. He was a co-captain of the team in the 1980s. He won a King Clancy Trophy and a Masterton Award. He's a Hockey Hall of Famer. And of course, one of the most iconic moments in Stanley Cup history is when Lanny McDonald, at the very end of his career, won that Stanley Cup at the Montreal Forum in 1989. My third player is defenseman Al McInnes. He's in that conversation as the best defenseman of the 1980s with Paul Coffey and Ray Borg. Had one of the hardest shots of all time. He was a four-time Norris Trophy finalist, and he would win one in St. Louis. But he scored over a point per game in Calgary five times. As a defenseman, that's very impressive. He won that Conn Smythe for the Flames in 1989. He led the playoffs with 31 points in 22 games as a defenseman. That's ludicrous. And my fourth player, I chose a goaltender, and that is Mika Kiprasov. He was the best goalie in franchise history, and and he was a workhorse too. He would play in as many as 76 games a year. In his Flames career, he had a 2.46 goals against average, a 913 save percentage, and 41 shutouts. He won a Jennings Trophy and a Vezina Trophy, and he was also a Hart Trophy finalist. And my biggest snub here would be Theo Fleury, but there are lots of others out there like Joe Neuendijk, even Johnny Gaudreau. We had a lot of comments for the Vancouver Canucks, and guys, you know what? I decided to kind of cheat on this one. Let's treat the Sedin twins as one. So we've got Henrik and Daniel Sedin as the first spot on the Mount Rushmore. Henrik won a Hart Trophy. They each won an Art Ross, and Daniel Sedin won a Ted Lindsay Award, and Henrik was the captain of that team for eight years. They got to Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Final in 2011, and the fact that they came into the NHL just joined at the hip and how they stayed on the same team for all that time, I really think it's something that we might not ever see in the NHL again. My second player, well, I guess my third, is Trevor Linden, captain Canuck for six years, including in 1994. He scored 12 goals and 13 assists in 24 games as the Canucks got to game seven of the final. He was also the president of hockey operations for a few years. The Canucks have had some great goaltenders, but I did choose Kirk McLean. He spent 11 years in Vancouver. He was a two-time Vezina Trophy final and in those 1994 playoffs, he was something else. 24 games, a 928 save percentage, and a 2.29 goals against average with four shutouts. And my fourth player, I chose Marcus Nasland. He was the captain of this team for seven years. He's only second to Daniel Sedin in goals with 346. He was an 03 Hart Trophy runner-up, but he did manage to win the Pearson Award that year. So that means, yes, my biggest snub is Pavel Bure and his back-to-back 60-goal -back years. He just didn't have the same longevity as some of these other players did. Now, I know it's kind of odd for me to do this for a team that's only been in the NHL for, well, not even three years, but let's do this for the Kraken just for fun, right? This could change by the end of the year. Anyway, first guy I thought of was Brandon Tanev. He was embraced as the face of the franchise and was the heart and soul of that team. They're a different team when he's not playing, when he's injured. The guy hits everything that moves out there, his personality. He's just one hell of a character. Second, Jordan Eberle continues to be a clutch player in the NHL, and he's been a mainstay in the top six for the Kraken for most of their time as a franchise. My third player is Jared McCann. He quickly became one of the best goal scorers in this era of NHL. He had 27 goals in his first season with Seattle, and then he ended up with 40 the next year. And my fourth player is Vince Dunn. He's an offensive play driver from the defensive side of things. He had 14 goals and 50 assists this past year. And so that means my biggest snub is Matty Beneers. He did win the Calder Trophy in 2023. He just hasn't been there as long as some of these other players. And I could have said Mark Giordano as well. He was the first captain in franchise history. Let's go to the Vegas Golden Knights. So my first player is Jonathan Marcheseau. He really epitomizes this team. He's been there since the very beginning. He was one of those original misfits from the 2017-2018 season. And certainly he's left his legacy with this franchise just based on what he did in the 2023 playoffs alone. He had 13 goals and 12 assists in 22 games and won the Conn Smythe. My next player is the franchise's first captain, and that is Mark Stone. This guy has been battling injuries for a number of years, and he overcame his adversity, putting up 11 goals and 13 assists in the playoffs, and looking like the full-form Mark Stone that we knew he could be. He's also been a two-time Selkie Trophy finalist, and as a winger, that's very impressive. My third player is Marc-Andre Fleury. He made a huge impact on the franchise, that charm, that charisma, 
everything Fleury just carried over from Pittsburgh, and actually, you could argue that he played his best hockey in Vegas. He won the 2021 Vezina Trophy and the Jennings Trophy that year. He had 23 shutouts in just 192 games. That's a hell of a lot. And of course, we do remember how he was traded away infamously to the Blackhawks. And my final player on this Mount Rushmore is William Carlson, one of those misfits from 2017-18. His previous high for goals in a season, I think, was nine, but he exploded his first year in Vegas for 43, and he led the NHL in plus minus by a margin of 13. He also had 11 goals and six assists in the playoffs. And so that means that my biggest snub, you could certainly say Shea Theodore, Alex Petrangelo, but I mean, again, looking back on that Stanley Cup run, Jack Eichel was amazing too. Now let's get to the Anaheim Ducks. So we got this comment here from New York Baby Boy, and he says, Korea, Solane, Getzlaff, Jaguar, with an honorable mention to Corey Perry. And you know what? I think that that looks like a great list. We'll start with the Finnish Flash, Tamus Alane, one of the great beauties in NHL history. 988 points, that's second all-time in franchise history, but of course he's first in goals with 457, and he did play several seasons outside of Anaheim. He had six seasons of at least 40 goals with the Ducks slash Mighty Ducks, and of course he's an icon of this game, especially for Finnish hockey. Our next player is Paul Correa. He was over a point per game with the Ducks with 669 points in just 660 games. He was the Hart Trophy runner-up in 1997, and he helped get the Ducks all the way to Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Final in 2003. Of course, scoring that iconic off the floor on the board after that huge hit from Scott Stevens, it's just a damn shame that concussions cut his career short. He was an amazing player. My third player is Ryan Getzlaff. He spent his entire career as a Duck, 1,157 games, and was captain for several seasons. He's the all-time franchise leader in points with 1,019, and he was actually the runner-up for the Hart Trophy in 2014. And lastly, I have Jean-Sebastien Jaguer. He played in 447 games with the Ducks. That's first among their goaltenders. John Gibson should pass that soon. But anyway, Jiggy is first all-time in wins with 206 and first in shutouts with 32. But Jiggy will go down as one of the best playoff goaltenders, especially for what he did in 2003. He had a 945 save percentage and a 1.62 goals against average with five shutouts. Now, the Mighty Ducks lost in seven games, but nonetheless, Jaguar won the Conn Smythe Trophy. That's the most recent time that somebody on a losing team in the Cup Final won the Conn Smythe. And of course, that means our biggest snub is Corey Perry, even though he did win a Hart Trophy and a Rocket Richard. All right, now let's talk about the Los Angeles Kings. And this was one of the more difficult teams to narrow down to four players. My first is Marcel Dion, clearly the face of the franchise, while they wore purple and gold, and he was a key reason why they became relevant after some very lean expansion years. He's second all-time in franchise goals with 550, including six seasons of at least 50 goals. He won an Art Ross Trophy and two Pearson Awards, and he's regarded as one of, if not the greatest player to never win a Stanley Cup. My second player is the great one, Wayne Gretzky. He made a huge impact on the Kings, not just as a team, but also just what it did cost culturally for West Coast hockey when he came over in 1988. It was such a big move that the Kings even rebranded for Wayne Gretzky, and he got them to their first Stanley Cup final in 1993. After scoring over 1,600 points with the Oilers, he put up 539 goals in LA. He won a Hart Trophy and three Art Ross Trophies. My third player is Andre Kopitar. I certainly had to choose somebody from the Stanley Cup winning years. He's been the linchpin of this franchise for like 15 years now, and he's also been the captain for a few years. He's played in over 1,300 games, all with LA, and he scored over 400 goals. He's won two Selkie trophies. And my last player is Jonathan Quick. I know that I'm snubbing a couple big, big names, but Quickie, he had an otherworldly performance in that 2012 Cup Final, a 946 save percentage, and a 1.41 goals against average, and he won the Conn Smith. He also has won two Jennings trophies for the fewest goals against. I think he should make the Hockey Hall of Fame. He's one of the best American-born goaltenders of all time. And my biggest snub is Luke Robitaille, who is the all-time leading goal scorer with 557 and is the franchise's current president. And to finish off the Pacific Division, we've got my San Jose Sharks. So let's look at this comment here from Wade Matthews. He says, Nabokov, Marlowe, Thornton, Pavelski. I think you nailed it. So we start with Patty Marlowe. He's the NHL's all-time leader in games played. And of course, he played over 90% of his career with the Sharks. He was the captain for four years. He was the franchise leader in points and goals. And he was the first to have his number retired, and rightfully so. And now he serves as a developmental coach. We love Patty Marlowe in San Jose. He's just Mr. San Jose Shark. Which means second is 
Jumbo Joe Thornton, the acquisition that really changed this franchise over the course of 15 years. He won the 2006 Hart Trophy and the Art Ross, and he scored over a thousand points with the Sharks. He was captain for several years, and he's just one of the icons of that era with that crazy beard and some of his uh, interesting locker room banter. My third player is goaltender Yevgeny Nabokov. He's the best Sharks goalie in franchise history, without question. He lasted over a decade, and the Sharks really haven't had that long-lasting of a goaltender outside of Nabby. Jones was like six years. Anyway, Nabby won the 2002 Calder. He finished as high as seventh for the Hart Trophy and five times finished in the top five for the Vezina Trophy. And as much of an impact as Thornton had on this franchise, Nabby was there before and he was helping this team already become consistently competitive year in, year out. And our fourth player is the big Pavelski, Joe Pavelski. He was captain of this team from 2015 to 19 until he signed with Dallas. And in his first year as captain, the Sharks reached their lone Stanley Cup final. He had five seasons of over 30 goals with San Jose, and he finished as high as seventh for the Hart Trophy and the Selkie. And even though this is an oversimplification, I think it's fair to say that once Pavelski left San Jose, things took a sharp turn for the worst. My biggest snub, I could have chosen Doug Wilson. He didn't play all that long in San Jose. I could have chosen Owen Nolan. I'm going with Brent Burns, a three-time Norris Trophy finalist and a one-time winner of that award, and just an icon in this era of NHL hockey. All right, let's finish with teams in the Atlantic Division. We're gonna start with the Tampa Bay Lightning. My first player is Martin St. Louis. He was the biggest star from their Stanley Cup run in 2004 and an undersized undrafted player who became a Hockey Hall of Famer, the first Bolt to have his number retired. In the 0304 season, he won the Hart Trophy, an Art Ross Trophy, the Pearson Award, and he actually scored eight short-handed goals that year. He also had nine goals and 15 assists in that Stanley Cup run in 23 games, and also won a second Art Ross and three Lady Bings, and was later also a captain for a year. Second on this Mount Rushmore is Steven Stamkos. He's the all-time leader in goals. He's second in assists, at least for now, and he's first in points. He's been the captain since 2014. He has two Rocket Richards, a Messier Award, and he's been runner-up for the Hart Trophy, and to his name, he has two Stanley Cups. I know he was injured for that 2020 run, but his 2021 performance was great, and he got them back into the final the next year as well. Our third player is Victor Hedman. He'll possibly go down as the best defenseman of the 2010s. He's a six-time Norris Trophy finalist and a one-time winner, and he also won the 2020 Conn Smythe. He's first all-time in scoring among Lightning defensemen and by a long shot. And fourth on our list is Andre Vasilevsky, just a year in and year out, one of the best postseason goaltenders we've ever seen. He won the 2021 Conn Smythe with a 937 save percentage and a 1.90 goals against average with five shutouts in 23 games. He's a four-time Vezina Trophy finalist and a one-time winner, and his goals saved above average in his career is already above 100. So that means my biggest snub, and it's really hard to leave him off this list, but it's Nikita Kucherov who won a Hart Trophy, a Ted Lindsay Award, and also an Art Ross Trophy. Now let's get to the Florida Panthers. So we've got Griffin Weber with this comment, Barkov, Luongo, Bure, and Kachuk. Now I respect the Matthew Kachuk nod, but I'm just not there yet because he's only played one full year as they make this video. But let's kick things off with Bobby Lou, Roberto Luongo. He played 11 seasons with the Panthers, notching a 919 save percentage, a 2.61 goals against average, and 38 shutouts for a team that was otherwise pretty darn bad. He was a Vezina Trophy finalist in 2004 and finished as high as fourth as a 36 year old later in his career. And Luongo is just a personality. He's just a character in the hockey universe. My second player is Captain Alexander Barkov. He's the longest tenured captain at six seasons and counting. He's the franchise leader already in games, goals, and points. He's a two-time Selkie Trophy finalist. He won that award once, and he also won a Lady Bing Award. My third player is Pavel Bure. He only spent four seasons with the Panthers, but he is fifth in franchise goals. And apart from Roberto Luongo, he's really the only bright spot between the 1996 Stanley Cup final run and their return to form in the late 2010s. He was also a two-time Rocket Richard winner with 58 and 59 goal seasons, and also was a finalist for the Hart Trophy. And my fourth player is goaltender John Van Beesbrook. Now, Beezer put the team on his back to that that Stanley Cup final in 96, and he stuck around for four more years, so that's why he's on this list. In 1995-96, he finished runner-up for the Vezina and third for the Hart Trophy, leading the NHL with 55.6 goals saved above average, and that's not a typo. And in the playoffs, he was just as good, if not better. In 22 games, he had a 932 save percentage and a 2.25 goals against average. So for my biggest snub, I thought about Scott Mellenby, who really catalyzed that rats on the ice tradition and was captain of that team for four years later on, but you also can't forget about Jonathan Huberdo. Now we get to the Buffalo Sabres and kicking things off is the dominator, Dominic Hasek. To some, he's the greatest goaltender of all time and certainly the most thrilling goaltender to watch in my lifetime. He spent nine years with Buffalo, notched a 926 save percentage, a 2.22 goals against average, and 55 shutouts.
shutouts. He won six Vezina trophies, two Jennings trophies, two Pearson awards, and two Hart trophies. He was also a finalist for that award three other times. We might not ever see another goaltender come close to these accolades. He was also a beast in that Stanley Cup final run in 99 with a 1.77 goals against average and a 939 save percentage. My second player is Gilbert Perrault. He was the longtime face of the franchise, leader of that iconic French connection line, and he got the Sabres to a Stanley Cup final, and he was a captain for four years. He's the all-time leader in games played and in scoring by a long shot. He's first in goals with 512, assists with 814, and points with 1,326. My third player is defenseman Phil Housley. He's a Hockey Hall of Famer who spent his first eight years with the Sabres, racking up 178 goals and 380 assists for 558 points. That puts him fifth all-time among Sabres and first among defensemen. He wasn't as successful as a head coach, but it wasn't entirely his fault, so he did contribute to the organization after his playing career. And last on my Sabres Mount Rushmore is Ryan Miller. He played in 540 games. He won 240 games, and that's first in franchise history. In Buffalo, he had a career 916 save percentage and 2.40 goals against average. And in his best season, he had a 929 save percentage and a 2.22 goals against average in 69 games to win the Vezina Trophy and finish fourth in MVP voting. And as for my biggest snub, you could choose Rene Robert or Rick Martin, or maybe somebody like Dave Anderchuk, but Lindy Ruff played 608 games for Buffalo, and then he coached the team for a number of years, getting them to that Stanley Cup final in 99. Now we've got the Detroit Red Wings, and we got lots of comments for this one. This is also quite difficult. This is an original six team. We start with Steve Iserman. He was the captain from 1986 to 2006. I, I couldn't even believe that when I read that. He ended the 42-year Stanley Cup drought in 1997, and he also captained the Red Wings to two more. We'll see what sort of legacy he leaves as general manager for the Red Wings, but we know what he already did in Tampa, and certainly he's laid some good foundational pieces. He played in over 1,500 games for Detroit. He scored 692 goals, which is second. He's first in assists, and he's second in points with 1,755, and that ranks him seventh all-time in NHL history. With the Red Wings, he won a Pearson Award, a Selkie trophy, a Masterton trophy, and that 1998 Conn Smythe. Our second player is Gordie Howe. He's as much of an icon in hockey as we'll ever see. He spent 25 years alone with the Red Wings. He's first all-time with 1,687 games. He scored 786 goals, that's first, and he had a total of 1,809 points. That alone would rank him fourth in NHL history. He also captained the Red Wings for four years. He won four Stanley Cups, six Art Ross trophies, and six Hart trophies. Our third player is somebody else who works in the front office right now, and that is Nicholas Lidstrom. He's also a four-time Stanley Cup winner and was captain of this team for six years. He won seven Norris trophies over his 20-year career, all with Detroit, and his 1,564 games and 1,142 points are sixth most by an NHL defenseman ever. And my last player on this Mount Rushmore is goaltender Terry Sawchuk, a bit of a throwback. He played 14 years with Detroit over three stints. He won the Calder Trophy and three Vezinas in Detroit, and in 1963 was a finalist for the Hart Trophy. And of course, as part of that era with Gordie Howe and Ted Lindsay, he won four Stanley Cups. And as for the biggest snub, really you could pick anybody and I would agree with you, but Pavel Datsyuk in our lifetime has been one of the most thrilling players to watch, one of the most electric forwards, one of the greatest all zone forwards we've ever seen. Now we get to the Boston Bruins. Bruins. We had some great suggestions here. Again, very difficult to narrow things down to four when we're talking about an original six team, but I think that some of you can agree with me here. Bobby Orr comes first on this list. He played 10 seasons with Boston and scored at least 100 points as a defenseman in six straight years. He won the Norris Trophy eight times. He also won the Calder Trophy, two Art Ross trophies as a defenseman, a Pearson Award, and three Hart Trophies. And he won two Stanley Cups and two Conn Smythes. Of course, Bobby Orr is known for flying through the air in the 1970 Cup final. My next player is defenseman Eddie Shore. He was one of the most violent players in NHL history, but also one of the great legends of the original six era. In 14 seasons with the Bruins, he won four Hart Trophies, the third most of any player ever. And he was a first team All-Star seven times. Now, All-Star teams started five years into his career. And you could actually argue that he's the reason why we have All-Star games in the first place. He also won two Stanley Cups with Boston in 1929 and 1939. My third player is Phil Esposito. He ranks second all-time in Bruins goals with 459. He's fourth in points with 1,012, but he played just 625 games. Alongside Bobby Orr, he won two Stanley Cups, five Art Ross trophies, two Pearson Awards, and two Hart trophies. 
And my last player is another defenseman, and that's Ray Bork. The lowest he ever finished in Norris Trophy voting was seventh, and that was over his 20 plus year career. He won that award five times, in addition to the Calder Trophy and the King Clancy Trophy. He was also a Hart Trophy runner up twice. In 1518 games, he scored 395 goals. That's a ton for a defenseman. Also notched 1,111 assists, and that adds up to 1,506 points. He had 73 more points with the Avalanche to finish his career, the all time leader in points among defenseman. So for my biggest snub, I mean, there are a million different names out there. Johnny Busick, Patrice Bergeron, but really I thought about Zdeno Chara. He won a Norris Trophy and was captain of that team for 13 years, including in 2011 when they won a Stanley Cup. Now let's talk about the Ottawa Senators, but this doesn't count the original Senators of the 20s and 30s. So first of all, it's Alfie. Daniel Alfredson, the 13-year captain of this team, by far the franchise's leading scorer in goals, assists, and points with 1,108. He had 13 seasons of at least 20 goals. He won the Calder Trophy, a King Clancy Trophy, and a Messier Award, and he's worked in hockey operations and player development for the franchise. My second player is defenseman Eric Carlson. He was a four-year captain, including in 2017, when he had 18 points in 19 playoff games despite a fractured foot. He was a four-time Norris Trophy finalist and a two-time winner, and he finished as high as fifth for the Hart Trophy, and of course, we know EK65 is just an icon, an absolute beauty in the hockey community. My third player is Jason Spezza, second all-time in Senators goals, assists, and points. He scored 687 points in 686 games, and he was a four-time 30-goal scorer with Ottawa. And the last guy on this Mount Rushmore is a bit of a twisted take, but I've got Craig Anderson. He's the franchise leader in games played and wins, and he's second in shutouts. In that 2016-17 season, he took a leave of absence to support his wife, who was battling throat cancer, and he returned later in the year to play some of the best hockey of his career. And that included backstopping the Senators to the conference its final with a 922 save percentage and a 2.34 goals against average. He won the Masterton Trophy that year, and his best year came in 2012-13. It was a shortened year, but he led the NHL in save percentage at 941 and had a 1.69 goals against average. As for my biggest snub, I chose Chris Phillips. He was the Senators' first overall pick and led the team in games played with 1,179. Certainly somebody elite in talent like Marion Hosa could be considered as well. We've got two more teams left, and these are the oldest in NHL history. We start with the Toronto Maple Leafs. We got this comment here from Axis, suggesting Dave Keon, Matt Sundin, Wendell Clark, and Borja Salming. That's a very strong list, and mine is fairly similar. So let's start with Dave Keon. He's third all-time in goals, assists, and points for the Maple Leafs with 987 points in 981 games. He won the Calder Trophy, two Lady Bing Awards, four Stanley Cups, including in 1967 when he won the Conn Smythe, and that was the last Stanley Cup the Maple Leafs won and even appeared in, and he was captain of that team for six years. Second on my list is Mats Sundin, a 10-year captain with the Maple Leafs. He's first all-time in goals, second in assists, and first in points with 987. He had 10 seasons of over 30 goals, won a Masterton Trophy, and he's the only Swedish-born player in NHL history with at least 500 goals. The third player on my list is defenseman Borja Salming, rest in peace, one of the first Swedish players to enter the NHL, and the first European-born player to be inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame. In franchise history, he ranks third all-time in games played, first all-time and assists with 620 and fourth in points with 768 and he was a four-time Norris Trophy finalist. And for my last player on this Mount Rushmore, I chose goaltender Turk Broda. He ranks first all-time in games played, wins, and shutouts with a career goals against average of 2.53. He won two Vezina trophies and five Stanley Cups for Toronto. And as for my biggest snub, I chose goaltender Johnny Bauer, who won two Vezina trophies and four Stanley Cups, although someone like Austin Matthews or even Mitch Marner could appear on this Mount Rushmore in a few years. And then lastly, we have the Montreal Canadiens. We had a couple of suggestions here, and I mean, so many great legends to consider. We'll start things off with Maurice Richard, the Rocket. He was such a legend in Quebec hockey that his 1955 suspension ignited a riot. He was a four-year captain of the franchise. He leads the franchise all-time with 544 goals, and he's fourth in points with 966. He led the NHL in goals five times, and now there's a trophy named after him. He also won a Hart Trophy and was a finalist for that award five other times. Our second player is the Flower. That's Guy Lafleur. Alongside Maurice Richard and Mary Lemieux, he's just an icon of Quebec hockey. He ranks second second in the franchise all-time in goals, he's first in assists, and he's first in points with 1,246. 
He won five Stanley Cups in the 1970s. He won three Art Ross trophies, three Pearson awards, two Hart trophies, and a Conn Smythe. My third player is Jean Beliveau. He was a 13-year captain who won two Hart trophies and an Art Ross trophy and the 1965 Conn Smythe. That was just one of his 10 Stanley Cups. Only Henri Richard, that's Maurice's brother, has more in NHL history with 11. And Beliveau ranks third all-time in Canadians' goals. He's second in assists, and he's also second in points with 1,219. And the final Canadian on my Mount Rushmore is goaltender Jacques Plante. He's an icon in NHL history. He popularized actually wearing a mask and doing so consistently. And with Montreal, he won six Vezina trophies, including five in a row. I mean, really with the Canadians, you could make a Mount Rushmore just with goaltenders because of course, Patrick Waugh, Ken Dryden, and Carey Price are snubs, along with perhaps Henri Richard and defenseman Larry Robinson. But my biggest snub is six-time Stanley Cup winner and seven-time Norris Trophy winner, Doug Harvey. So we're at the end of this video. Anyway, if you made it this far in your comment below, drop a 100 emoji and I'll be sure to give it a heart. And let me know your favorite team's most iconic moment. If you wanna keep up with me in between my uploads, join our Discord community. You can also follow me on various social platforms. I put all of that in the video description down below and I'll see you around for more content like this very soon. Thank you so much for watching guys. Do leave a thumbs up before you go and I'll see you around for another one like this. I'm Nick and I'll catch you twisters later. Ciao for now.